Hello, welcome to Psychic Chat with Daryl. My name is Daryl and I am a clairvoyant psychic. I have been seeing and hearing spirits for many years now, pretty much all my life. And, uh, and I've just been trying to be able to help as many people as I can. Whether it is um, getting information from messages from loved ones for people, or whether it's getting information from spirit, as I am only a messenger, as getting information from spirit through to people to help them with their spiritual abilities or to help them in every day-to-day -day society. And this is what the, the main aim is why I created this show, so that we can be interactive and people can communicate and to chat with me. It doesn't have to be just to, to get a reading or anything like that. It can be just to, to ask some questions in regards to their spiritual abilities and things like that. So, um, and that's what I'm here for, and that's what the show is all about. So, how about we just get on with the show, hey? G'day everybody, how you going? I'll just get some, a little bit of, just get a little bit of music going in the background. Hello Josephine, Mary, and um, a few of the others, Nikki. Well, tonight I've got a different music on here. Um, yeah, I got told off. My other music that I had on there, which I thought was really nice, they, um, they said that I wasn't allowed to have it on there. Uh, on YouTube anyway, that was when I played it on there and they said I wasn't allowed to have it so I've got my music that I created and that I made myself personally and um, so I'm playing that in the background now so if you hear some budgies, hey let me know because you know, we'd be surprised there are some budgies in the background but that's okay, nothing to worry about so I hope everyone is, is very well out there and uh, are keeping well and um, looking after each other it seems that um, things are a little bit better in South Australia and um, I just hope the hell it starts happening everywhere around the world because I think that'll be a, a better thing and um, you know it just yeah it's just really really sad with what's going on in the world but we are getting there hi Wendy hi Charlie and Stacy if anybody is interested in, in um, it's coming to see me, having a reading or whatever, um, look, just go on to inbox me through the, the, the Clairvoyant page and um, just in, inbox me through there and, and we can arrange something. So there's no worries. I don't think it's going to be too bad nowadays. And, uh, and I just feel like as though that um, you know, things may get a little bit more relaxed. Mind you, we'll still be vigilant. And I think everyone should be a little bit vigilant in where we go and what we do and how we go about things. So um, I'm just letting a few people come on to the show here a little bit now and um, and then I'll just sort of uh, get into things a little bit more. I'm going to talk tonight a little bit about the vibrational frequency levels of spirits. Um, I don't know whether it's, um, it might go over people's heads, I don't know. So we'll just see what happens. But I, um, I don't know if everyone read the post that I put on there because I did actually try to get across to people to, um, to look at what type of question to ask and, and just the one and stuff, so... I hope people do read. Okay. Nikki says, if there are any spirits around me at the moment, oh, I think you'll probably find pretty much that there is. Got no worries about that. There it is. So I've got my screen all adjusted in here. I'm actually trying to look and see if I can do a few things extra, and I've been asking with Be Live and that, so it's just a little bit of... Uh, things going on there but I actually feel like as though there's two women around you Nikki um, two older women I don't see them as being really young one of them probably uh, around the 60 mark and the other one's a little bit older um, I do feel like as though they are around you and keeping you company I do feel like as though you've got a male guardian angel as well but I do feel like as though they're there for you and they're trying to um, to get through to you to let you know that they are there with you and around you and um, and just sort of you know keeping you company and, and giving you a lot of love which sometimes I think that a lot of people don't seem to get. Uh, Charlie, like I was saying, inbox me through the, the Clairvoyant um, Facebook page and we can see what we can arrange, okay? Howdy, Stacey, Jess and Luke. I was about to go on to go major surgery. Do you see any guardians around me to guide me through this? 
I see uh, you have a, a female guardian angel that's with you. Now, they're a part of your auretic field. So they're not necessarily um, not like a, a, a spirit guide or anything like that. This is my interpretation anyway, people. Whether people believe this or not, that's up to them. But um, I believe like as though you've got a female one there and she's with you to help you and to get you through everything anyway. And I do believe that there's uh, there's loved ones that are around you and also spirit guides. You've got a, uh, a healer, spirit guide that's around you. And I feel like as though they're going to be helping you within the um, healing that you need um, within it before and after. So um, I do believe this healer will actually help you out as much as you can. Hi, Kelly. And uh, Michelle says, even though I need some guidance with my youngest son in schooling, his poor attendance, I really am stressed about which path to take. Um, look, it's very, very difficult with children nowadays, and especially with kids that are after, after the age of 10. Pardon me. And, uh, and the biggest thing I give to people is that you've got to ask the kids what they want, where they want to go about things, how they want to go about things, what they want to do, and, and um, then that way you can actually work on them through that and help them to be able to find their path and the way that they would like to go. Look, kids will change their minds up and down all the time. They always continue changing. That's why I tend not to do readings for kids or anyone under the age of 18 because they have a, a big tendency to, um, to turn things around and, and go in different directions all over the place. So my big advice to is with, with kids is that ask them what they really want to do in life or in, uh, for work-wise or anything like that because then that way you can actually try to help them to be able to see the direction. You may be able to take them to a person who's already in that field of work so that, that way they know whether or not that's good for them or not. And, uh, and, and that goes for a lot of kids that are, you know, are parents out there that can't control their kids so much that, and they're, and they're out, in the, out in the streets or all hours or whatever. Take them down to the police station and have a chat with the cops. Tell them what they, you know, get them to show them what they go through and what they would have have to do if they did get in trouble with the law and things like this. It's not to scare the kids shitless. It's basically to help them to understand that um, the way of guidance in the way in, in to either help them in some way. And uh, not all the, all the police are like that, but still, um, if you can do that, maybe that might help. Okay. Hi, Jody. And uh, Mary, hello. I'm presuming you're talking about um, vibrational frequency levels. Listen, within the, the vibrational frequency levels of a human being or even of the spirits, it goes from 0 to 33 below and 0 to 33 above. Now, don't forget, like I said before, these are my views. So if anyone wants to believe it, they can. If they don't, they don't. I don't care. But um, my views are that 0 to 33 above, 0 to 33 below. 0 to 33 above, you've got your, uh, your guardian angel that's the closest part, part with you and around you. They are a part of your auretic field. That's why a lot of people don't see the guardian angels so much. They'll see the spirit guide. Because after the guardian angels going up in frequency levels, the guardian angels, then you've got your spirit guides, your spirit, oh, sorry, you've got your loved ones. That's why we can tap into them reasonably quickly and fairly easily is because the, the loved ones vibrate at a, a certain level that's similar to ours. So that's why when people go into meditation, they can get into that meditative state and connect through to the spirits on the other side. That's where I usually tell people, if you want to communicate with your loved ones on the other side or even communicate with your spirit guides, who are the next ones after the loved ones, by the way, then go into a meditative state and you call them to come in there with you. You can call a, a relative or that is deceased or you can call your spirit guides to meet you in there or anything like that. You can actually create that within your meditation. So um, but that's where I get going. So you've got yourself, you've got the guardian angel, you've got the loved ones, you've got your spirit guides, and then you've got your angels, archangels, and so forth, up to the Dionysus hierarchy angels, uh, cherubim, seraphim, and all that. So the big thing about it is that, I mean, you'll get a lot more in between there. There's uh, the great white brotherhood, you've got the, uh, the ascended masters, and you've got a lot of other different ones that all have their part to play in amongst everywhere that we, um, that we probably don't know about. A lot of it, though, however, is not really relevant to the uh, physical aspect of the life that we live that we live here. But uh, if anyone does have an interest, I usually try to point them in the way of, of the you know the archangels. The main four is Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. And um, I actually got corrected instead of Archangel Michael. I got corrected as Archangel Michael, um, and same as Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. So I um, I believe they're the main four. Um, archangels that are uh, that are there to be able to be 
I suppose used and helped you know, to help us. And um, and also the Ascended Masters. I used to steer people towards the Ascended Masters, so it's very interesting uh, to be able to learn about them and and, um, and take up an interest in them. They can help in many different ways as well, the seven rays and all that. So give it a go and have a looky. Okay, now where are we going now? Josephine says, Hi, Daryl, I was told I was an old soul, just wanting to know who I was in one of my past lives. Do you know, you're better off going to see a past life regression, mainly because of the fact that, look, we've, we've probably all had in excess of 300 past lives. Um, this is my believing anyway, that we've all had more than 300 odd past lives. So an old soul is someone that's been around for a long time and um, and therefore they are, they've learnt a hell of a lot um, spiritually. Okay, um, experiences and stuff like that. They, they learn it spiritually. So you've got um, many different ways of, of going through that. But with past lives and things like that, think about it. I mean, if we've had 300 odd past lives, we could have been an axe murderer, we could have been a, a saint, we could have been, a, I mean, a priest, we could have been a, um, a, a nun or, or a pope, or, or not necessarily a pope, but, you know, we could have been anybody, a king or a queen or, or things like this. Because at different times of our lives can be different stages of our lives, especially in past lives. Even though, you know, you might get, say, for an example, just the top of my head, King Solomon, all right? That was a past life of who? Now, we've got millions of people that are upon this earth. Now, is it only the belief that one person had a life of King Solomon? No, that's that's fairly indecisive. The reason why I say that is because it's a very, very interesting topic because in the spirit world, there is no time. They don't have clocks. They don't have um, any furniture or anything like that over there as well. So where there is no time, they are able to go back in time as well as forward in time of our time. So they can go back and forward. And so if somebody dies now, they can go back and go into another life back further or they can go further forward. And my belief is that there's life on other end of other planets and they could even be probably going to those planets because each living being has a soul and has a spirit. So that's why I believe that there people have... Uh, probably previously lived on a planet before somewhere else. Who knows? That's why we have some of these different different dreams that we have and fantasies that we have because it's a, it could have been that we were living in a different planet or something else at a different time. So there we go. I hope that is some help. If it went over your head, sorry. But... Um, Okay, Mary, what have you got in here? I've been breathing quite differently, like something is expelling. Not quite sure what that is happening. Well, like I've said before, along this time period that we have at the moment um, and going through this waiting period, I suppose you can put it for, for this, this silly bloody coronavirus thing to go away, um, we are going through a period of time where we could be experiencing a lot of things happening with us spiritually. Uh, and even physically. But you'll probably find that it could be the negative energies that might be around there that your body is rejecting now and it's sort of expelling it out and not wanting to have it with you anymore. Um, it can be from different areas. It could be from people that you might have met or known or anything like that that may be, um, uh, have a negative influence. But it's a matter of just um, looking at things differently and look at where you've been and what you're doing and things, if you're going through things differently, it may well be causing causing this breathing and um, which is different. And uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a medical uh, explanation. It could be something that you're doing or creating throughout within the physical beings of the spirit being and, uh, and cleaning out the energies that we have. Interesting, isn't it? Stacey, I actually feel like as though uh, I have a good outcome. I just have a good feeling. That's all, Stacey. I do feel like as though um, I do have a feel it's all good. I don't see anything bad happening, happening there for you, okay? At the moment, I'm trying to concentrate on the, uh, the people that are asking questions specifically. Um, I can't do anything generally. Um, I'm trying to steer away a little bit from that. Uh, it seems to take a little bit... Uh, out of everything because you've got to it's not a matter of concentration it's not a matter of tuning in it's not a matter of any of that it's just that there could be a lot that can be covered within 
uh, a general question and we don't have time for any of that. Hi Catherine, look I'm actually feeling like as though it won't be too far. Now, I love it when the Spirit says it won't be too far. They don't have time over there, so how the hell long, how long is that? Yeah, uh, we don't know. That's like some people used to say to us, so be patient, it's not far away, it's okay, it's not far away. Meanwhile, a couple of years got to go past and we've only decided it might happen. But I don't feel like as though it's going to be too long and then I feel like as though it will be this year. All right, Catherine? I know several people myself that are physically wanting to have um, surgery and operations themselves and um, and are, are waiting and have been waiting for quite a considerable time. And uh, and I just feel like as though that, um, yeah, sooner the better for some people because it can actually give them a better life. So I do wish you all the best. Okay, so Jody's saying, no, her mum's with me, but do I have any healing spirits very much needed for myself and my grandson? No, I think you will find that a lot of the uh, spirits that are in the spirit world do give healing to people. Call upon Archangel Raphael to give healing, okay? Really speaking, Archangel Raphael is a, is a very, very powerful healer, Archangel. And, um, and I believe that if you call upon them, and I have done so previously in times, and it helps. Archangel Raphael helps. So, and the big thing about it is it's not just Archangel Raphael can go to one person and not anybody else. They are capable of going to different people, many different people. And if then they have others that they can guide into to helping other people as well. But yes, there are healing spirits around you. There are angels or healing angels, I'd like to put it, that are around you and around a lot of people, not just you and your grandson. So there are healing angels out there that are around. Ask them, call them, call them to come into your life and to give healing to you and um, and your grandson. And to, for that matter, everyone can ask for them or for those who need it. And uh, and then that way they can, healing angels, and Archangel Raphael can actually give a lot of healing for, for people that need it. Get over go. How are you? Listen, I've just got a, a really, really funny feeling. There's a male that's in spirit that's actually um, trying to sort this out, or, or not this sort of guiding. And I feel like as though this, this um, a child that comes into your life is going to be guided, and it will be a special child. Okay. Hi, Kerry. Okay. So. Yeah, Sarah, you'll probably find there's a lot of people uh, that are lost at the moment, and I'm talking about in many different ways. I mean, look, there's a lot of people out there lost at the moment in regards to work. There's a lot of people out there at the moment in lost in regards to relationships. There's a lot of people out there at this moment that are, are lost in regards to their home environment and what they're doing. And my, what I try to encourage people on the show is to, to be able to um, have a good look at where you are and where you're going. Plan it all out in front of you. Look at everything that you've done, every, everywhere you've been and everything else like this, right? If it's to do with work, look at everything that you've done in the past and then start to put it into perspective of where you want to go and what you want to do and then start doing things now, looking for it and getting in the direction so that way once all this bullshit is over, you can actually get going and get started and get moving. So I think that this is a time where where we are all, and I mean everybody, is going through a particular time, a period in their lives where we are looking at where we are, what we're doing, who we are with, and how we're going about things, not just for now, but for our future. And that's why we need to really consider what we are doing and how we are going about things. Okay. Hi, Daryl. Um, where the hell did that just disappear? Oh, there it is. Um, my daughter, I've been sensing spirit in the house, not unusual. After a somewhat quiet period, any insight? You'll find that a lot of spirits will, it, you'll have activity, then there'll be less. Then there'll be activity, then there'll be less. It, it happens at any particular time. Um, a lot of activity in the haunted areas are actually um, 
you know, they're in, in the hotels and stuff like that, and they get more of the activity around the 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Why? Damn if I know. They don't have clocks, so I suppose they won't really care. But they seem to be more active around that particular time. I feel that's probably because everyone is relaxed state then, and that's when things can actually, uh, is quiet enough for them to be able to come out and get a bit active and stuff like that. But um, sensing spirits in your house, great. That is fantastic. Look for the signs of who you think they may be. Ask questions. Experiment. Give little bits and pieces of experiment. But you will find that after quiet periods of time, that means your intuition starting to kick back in. You might not necessarily be um, living as much in the physical aspect of it all. You might be getting a little bit more relaxed. So that way, the spiritual side will, will come back in a bit more. So there can be many different reasons, but I just have a think about what I said. You might find one of them being the right one. And I think I already suggested before, Kelly, who can be the best Archangel in health, and it's Archangel Raphael. So, you know, it, everyone should research and look at things like this, and they can actually find out who um, is best for them. And I, and I say that because not necessarily that a person um, – who needs healing needs to have a different archangel with them or a person who needs to have spiritual protection needs to have the healing. It can really vary and, and you're not going to have an influx of uh, spirits all just jumping on top of you because you need work. There's heaps and heaps of people out there, remember, and everyone's an individualist and so therefore they will need their help in their own way. And, um, and we don't necessarily know what that is, but by Jesus, they seem to. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what I think, anyway. Michelle saying, can you identify which areas of my life I need to work on into, and to grow spiritually? Likewise, what I just said. Really, it is. And probably answer some of the other questions as well. But I, I in the biggest areas, so Michelle, actually, do you know what? I would really love for you to work on your chakras, okay? For some reason or other, I don't know why, but chakras is very, very important to you. So maybe you should delve into that and have a look at that because that can help our physical bodies as well if our, all our chakras are running in, in correct perspective, whether they're spinning correctly, with their cleanse and everything else that goes with it. So investigate about that. Oh, Linda, how you going? What field do I see you in getting a full-time job? You know, this is what's very, very difficult because there's going to be so many people out there looking for work and looking for jobs. You need to be working in the care industry, Linda, um, and I feel like as though that there are many areas that you could look into, but you've really got to start looking at what you have done in the past or which direction you want to go and then perhaps start doing um, any courses or, or any uh, stuff like that. You can do them online nowadays. They're pretty free and everything else. But have a look at the areas of where you want to go. It's not necessarily a matter of what you want to do. It's a matter of what you need to do spiritually and where you feel more comfortable with. And I feel that your soul and your spirit would be more comfortable if you were in the care industry. Now, remind, remember, people, the care industry is a very, very big area but to me the care industry is when the person is helping people in any way they can and that's usually tells me that they're a care person okay so if you can get out into the industry where you can help people and do things for people then that's where your heart and your soul will be most happy g'day deb how you going I don't really need to tell you because you already know who he is, don't you? And um, I do believe there's a couple there. There's a, um, a male and a female. The female with the dark hair, dark curly hair, I feel like is around you quite a bit. Um, and I feel like that's to do with somebody else. And I also feel like as though there's that oh, there's a male that's around you, um, an older male. And I feel like he's probably he's around you to, to help you out in regards to the where you're going. Now, I say that on a physical sense. Because I feel like as though he's going to be helping you in regards to um, showing you a direction of what to go for and where to go for within work wise. So you need to start doing like meditation and start thinking about everything because I feel like as though he's going to slip this information through so that it'll give you a little bit of guidance of different and new ideas that can help you. They're telling me, yes, 
all right? Um, that, that's a big thing that I'm getting, and I am feeling a yes, okay? I'm feeling like as though um, they're working on them, um, and I'm just feeling like as though you, there's, there's a male that, I presume it's something, but there's a male around that is helping and um, and, and trying to, to be able to make sure that all comes out good. Okay, how do you de block or deal with psychic attacks? Put protection around yourself. Look, protection nowadays around people. If anyone's working with the spiritual stuff or have an interest in the spiritual stuff, show signs of, of um, intuition and things like that, they should always learn a bit about spiritual protection. And um, and I'm, I'm regarding to, uh, I mean, people have different, there's different techniques. They have the pink bubble or uh, a lot of other different techniques where you can put the protection around you. You can ask for Archangel Michael, put a band of protection around you or put a bubble around you or whatever. There's many different techniques. Have a look at some of them and just look at which one you feel is right for you and uh, and do things like that because that can actually help with psychic attacks as well. Psychic attacks are, yeah, look, I, I believe there are some psychic attacks out there, but I don't take them on. I don't, I don't you know, I won't accept them. So therefore, it, it makes it a little bit difficult for someone to psychically attack me. It's a little bit like the energies of the universe. You now, like with, if you walk around the street, um, you'll probably find that different people's energies, uh, different energies of electronic devices or anything like that can actually affect your energies and affect your, your auretic field around you. I don't let it affect me. And that's probably the best thing to do about it. I mean, I can go into a, a, a full electronic store and I won't let it bother me. That's electronic. Physical psychic attacks are, are uh, what can I put it? Psychic attacks are um, implemented of energy being directed towards you in a not ni in a not nice way. So if you don't accept that, then usually you won't be affected by it. That's my interpretation anyway. So a lot of people probably don't agree with that, but that's, that's just how it goes. And um, and like I was saying, I had my other music on here and uh, when I was on YouTube and I actually got a letter to say that it was copyrighted and blah, 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 and yet I thought I'd downloaded free music. And they said to me that it was all copyrighted, so the music that you hear in the background now is the music that I made um, years ago when I did a, a meditation CD, and, uh, and that music is has been created by me so no one can say anything is copyrighted at the moment everything that i am doing here now is done by me and it is um yeah it is not no one can say that i'm stealing or copywriting anything from anyone now hi Anne, and how are you a dismal virginia why what's going on over there well i'm glad you can see me kylie <laughs> And well, a lot of you can probably see me. I can't see anybody. I can just see words on the side over here. Um, we'd love to know if we ever buy our own home, as I feel we take one step forward. Oh, look, at this particular moment, everybody is taking one, one step forward and two steps back. It is very difficult and it's very hard. But listen, don't ever give up on your dream. Really, I mean that. And I, I really heartfelt. Don't give up on your dream because I do feel like it's, like, it's going to happen when... At this moment, we don't really know. But my heart and soul is saying, don't give up. Keep keep trying and it will happen, okay? Okay. Hang on, what have we got in here, Lucy? Hi, Daryl. I've been told by my counsellor that telepathy and signs when someone is thinking of you or about to contact is not telepathy, just our brain create a template. Wow, that's different. Okay, well, look, that's, just remember, don't, don't let it upset you for a start. Number one is other people's interpretation. Anything I say here is my interpretation. It can differ from the next person or the next Joe Blow down the road or the next video you look at. So don't take it on, all right? Don't take it on because there are many different views um, in regards to telepathy and uh, the signs of when someone's thinking of you and things like that. I mean, look, there's a lot of things that's happening. As I've mentioned on here before, my mother used to hold a photograph of me and then turn around and go, ring me, Daryl. And damned if I know, I would just would be anywhere around in Australia or anything and I'd have to go and go to a phone, pick it up and ring mum and say, yeah, what do you want? That is like someone thinking about you. Yeah, okay. Is it a form of telepathy? Yeah, okay. 
telepathy to me is when you you you're concentrating and you're getting mind to mind um some people do that in different ways you can do that through um um i don't know astro traveling people can actually communicate through that and re in reality then coming out onto the phone and saying oh yeah i was talking to you last night you're right you're right about such stuff and they can actually communicate in there but telepathy to me is like mind to mind um, where people usually do that and when you're thinking about somebody and all of a sudden they ring and stuff like that that can be a part of intuition it can maybe involving a bit of telepathy in there but it might also just be intuition so a lot of things that's happened that people do say and and go around thinking is probably just intuition um, of the people that are that are involved and yes we can sense other people's thoughts i mean I'm, look years ago I'm not going to say that I used to read people's minds, but I used to actually feel the other people's thoughts. And, um, and yeah, don't do it. It got me into trouble. You don't do it, especially with women. Anyway, um, yeah, the thing was, I was doing it, and I was actually like, it was as if it was mind reading, but I wasn't. It was just that I was tuning in on their thoughts and stuff like that. And to me, like I said, that's a part of intuition. So, so don't get upset by it. Everyone is allowed to, to be able to think of, of what, however they want to do things and stuff like that and what they believe in. And that's the same as everything, whether it's religion or whether it's just life in general. So don't let other people um, affect you in the way of putting you down or anything like this because um, unless you start reading, and I usually encourage people, look, if you want to find out about telepathy, go and read about half a dozen books on telepathy and then look for the common denominator of each of those books get a pen and paper and just write down the common denominators of out of each book that's the same then you've got a pretty good idea on that that's get around the generalization of the truth all right here now let's have a look and people tend to pass over around two to four in the morning so maybe that's why there was so much activity at those times well there you go there's a good explanation thanks Anne. Michelle, no worries. And yes, look, like I said before, there's many ways that you can do that. With meditation, you can call in the angels, the archangels, you can call in your spirit guides, you can actually communicate with your guardian angel if you really want to. And uh, my belief to about this is now, this is something I can say. My belief, and I'm saying it this way, my belief about um, guardian angels is that you can give your guardian angel a, a name. But my belief also is, because this is what I got told by my guardian angel, is that that name that you give your guardian angel needs to be there for the rest of your life. Okay? And my also my belief was that uh, is, is that the guardian angel is not a loved one, it's not anybody else that you know upon this world. Why? Because they were created before you were even on this world and before you were even put into this world. They created it in the spirit world and made it happen in the physical aspect of it all. So a guardian angel has been assigned to you, and that's why I usually tell people, no, it's not a guard, it's not a grandmother or grandfather or anything like that. But once again, like I keep saying, it is my interpretation. And I do say that for a reason, because I do want everybody out there to, to realise that everyone does have different opinions, and it doesn't mean to say that they're all wrong. It just means that everyone has different opinions, and it's up to you as to choose to which ones you prefer to go with. That's all it is. Hello, Alicia. How are you? Life's thrown so much shit. I'm so lost. Yeah, I know. And you're not the only one, sweetheart. You are not the only one. And, you know, perhaps you had chosen this particular time for all that to happen. So that, that way you can get it all off your chest of, you know, maybe some past karma or whatever. But the big thing about it is don't ever give up because the thing about it is that you're a very, very tough person and you're very strong minded. So, so therefore, I believe that you will be, will be able to get through anything thick or thin. And I also believe that there are some spirits that are around you that are guiding you and helping you in all of this. And it doesn't mean to say that it has to be a reason as to why you're going through it all. It just might mean that other people are throwing all this at you and you are recognising it all. So sometimes have a look at where you are and see what you can do, not what you can't do. I mean, everybody out there, all of you, always look at what you can do, not what you can't do. Because 
then that way you're going to be able to make things happen. You're going to be able to do things. You're going to be able to get going and, and get things moving. So at the particular mind, uh, at particular moment, use this time that we have to do things like this, to start getting yourself in a positive mode so you say, do you know, I'm not going to allow that to stop me. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make things work properly. I'm going to start listening to the right advice. I'm going to start going the way I want to go, not the way someone else wants me to go. Think about that and see how you go with that. Good morning from Minnesota. Hello, how are you? Is it possible to have a message for you today? Be kind to your mum. Oh, no, sorry. And um, the big thing is that, now I never clicked on that one. I'll get to you in a minute, Tina. Wanda, I hope you're well over there in the USA, in Minnesota. It's very disturbing hearing all this stuff that's in the US. And um, the biggest thing is for you, I feel like as though to, look, there's a lady that's around you that she's saying that you need to love yourself a little bit more and to take care of yourself, all right? I'm feeling like as though she's sort of saying that you need to just just watch out for those that are around you and then you will see what I'm talking about You and you'll see what you mean. That's what she said. And I do feel like as though there's a lot of love there for you too, Wanda, okay? A matter of time, Tina, seriously, a matter of time. I just, yeah, it makes me sort of really, I'm amazed that it hasn't happened yet, seriously. My screen keeps jumping around in here, all the words. Only because people are popping them in. That's all right. Okay, let's see. Kylie, can you feel spirits around me in a uh, um, new view of life? Do you know, I'm actually getting uh, a, a... Look, I'm actually getting a younger male that's around you and I'm actually feeling like as though this male is, is quite proud of you and is saying that, um, you know... Don't stop. Keep going at whatever you're doing because I feel like as I was very proud of you and, and I feel like as though you must be doing something right and going the right direction, okay? So whatever you're thinking, whatever you're looking at doing and things like that is very proud that you've been thinking this way and you're very proud that you're going to be going in the direction that you're going. So just keep pushing on and keep going the way that you need to go. I feel like as though that's why it's going to happen. I wish my screen wouldn't keep jumping around like it is. It's very hard for me to read. G'day, Tracy. How you going? Been a while. Aha. Uh -huh. About the new man that's coming to your life. If you feel hesitant in any way, Tracy, then why are you asking? The biggest thing is that you need to start listening to your, your feelings, um, your intuition. And um, and I just feel like as though that communication is, is one key that you can actually use to be able to find everything in in good shape and good uh, yarn going in a good direction. But communication is your key, okay? You really need to stick with that key, Tracy, and you should be able to start communicating more and, and get things going in there. Uh, this bloody yarn thing is jumping around like crazy on me over here. Listen, I just had a male voice just come through just a minute when I was talking to, to you there, Tracy, and I'm feeling like as though you're saying, hey, g'day, and um, it's almost like as though, hey, hey, listen. So I feel like something must be coming up for you. Um, so just be aware of things that are happening around you and just wait and see what happens, okay? Take things slowly. Don't try to go bad out of hell. Yeah, actually, not just his father. Who's the other male that's with him too? Is that it's something to do with his father, your father? But there's another male that's connected. So I don't know what that is, but they're with him and um, and always helping. Yes. So the answer is yes. He's definitely there. Ariana, do you know, the big thing about it is, that, I mean, you're saying you're working and cleaning in people's houses and still trying to figure out how to avoid taking people's shit and you're a sponge, but the big thing about it is that don't take on that feelings that you get. What people need to do is to look at that and think, well, okay, look, I'm feeling not so much about, you know, a good thing about this, then it's not to do with you, let it go. 
and literally look at that. It's like, yeah, well, that's, only, that's, that's to do with them or to do with somebody else. It's not me. Okay, I don't need to worry about it. I only worry about what's happening around you and what you're doing. And if anything else pops up in there and your feelings of anything else, just turn around and dismiss it. Just turn around and say, well, do you know what? I don't really need to take any notice of that. I don't need to worry about that. It's got nothing to do with me. It's not when you go to work. You go to work, you do your work. Do your work. Then when you finish your work, you go home. Don't take work home with you. When you go home, you turn around and sort of say, okay, if anything happens at work now, I'll deal with that tomorrow. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going home. You deal with home stuff. So just basically it's a matter of not taking on the things that, that do affect you and that do bother you. Don't take them on because it can be another person's interpretation of something. It could be their opinion. It could be um, a feeling that they've been giving you. So. Okay. It all depends for, for different people. The best form of meditation that I feel um, that I can usually recommend to a lot of people is uh, a talk through meditation. Okay. And if you've been doing a meditating, you know, meditating for quite a while, um, try something different because when you do something different, then you'll find um, it can actually re trigger things differently and make things happen a little bit better and can probably even uh, help in different ways. So, first of all, do a talk through meditation because when the physical mind is con concentrating on what's being said, it's being taken away from the day-to-day -day society. It's not thinking about, oh, what am I going to make for tea tomorrow? Oh, what am I going to do tomorrow at work? Blah, blah, blah. No, you're concentrating on what's being said in the talk through meditation. So maybe perhaps try that. And if you've, if you've gone through all that stage and that's okay, well, then try something else. Try a different one. And then that way you might find the right one that's good for you. I usually tell people to meditate about an hour before they go to bed. That way you can get through the meditation. Then when that finishes, you can get up, go to the toilet, do whatever you want to do, have a drink and whatever, get dressed, go to have a shower what, and go to bed. And then by the time you get to bed, you're still in that rela partial relaxed state and that usually can help to be able to get to sleep. You know, my big advice for you to say is yes, they will. But the biggest thing is that with what's going on in this world at the moment, it puts the wind up anybody. It makes it very difficult for anyone to be able to be relaxed. And people need to be relaxed to, to make things like that happen, okay? So if they're having stress in their in their lives and they're worrying about things too much, tell them to just, just sort of relax a bit and, and just, yeah, because that's what can stop it. And your mother, what about the others that are there too? And I also feel like as though there's a little girl that's in spirit too. Don't know about that, but a little girl that's in spirit and she's sort of saying that don't take life too seriously. Have a little bit of fun in your life and enjoy life a little bit and um, and just take care and look after yourself. But, um, yeah, look, look for the signs. And if there's any, you know, anything happening around, it might, like I said before, it might be a song um, that plays on the radio at the time that you might be thinking of your mum um, or, or anything like that. You know, look for little signs. It might be perfumes and smells or anything like this. It might be something that you see that can trigger it to, that you think, oh, that, that reminds me of mum. Maybe that's mum giving you that sign. So think about things like that. You know, I think that, Christina, a lot of people are going to be very worried about travel next year. doesn't necessarily mean to say whether it's April or whether it's July next year. I think a lot of people are going to be very cautious. Um, you will get those ones that's got their head in the sand and think, hey, who cares, I'm just getting out there and having fun. But the big part about it is that, you know, people will be cautious in going on holidays and stuff like that. I would consider thinking about it a little bit more. Um and just, and just give that a bit more thought. April, yeah, look, things can be fine by April next year, but they might not be too. So I would just suggest to people that are thinking of travelling like early next year, have another think about it, and if you really want to and you really feel comfortable about it, then, hey, look, just listen to your intuition and just go with it. But I think people are going to be quite cautious with that because anything can happen, all right? No worries, Alicia. And I and I do realise it meant now and not that meow. 
<laughs> Everyone's got to put themselves first, you know. You've got to think about where you are in life and what you're doing. Others aren't going to do it for you. Only you can. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, mate, if you can get through and give me a private message in my uh, clairvoyant page there and, and I'll, I'll have a chat with you in there, mate. See, the biggest thing is, with, especially, especially with you, Stephen, is that a lot of things are happening with uh, different people. You know, there's changing in work. Um, there's a lot of different things that's happening around you, whether it's to do with, um, you know, relationships, whether it's to do with work. And um, and you're no different there, Stephen. You've got different things happening with you. Not just one. There's several that's happening around you. And, you know, the biggest thing that I'm getting from a male that's, uh, that's in spirit around you is that he's saying that just watch your money. I don't know what that means and don't take it at me, but he's just like, watch your money. So you just be careful of what you're doing. And, um, and that's the main thing that I was getting. Oh, I love it when people can have a little chat in the background there. Hello, Amy from Parry Hills West. Going to Queensland to uh, fight Hun in the WBC. Yeah, well, do you know, like I said to you, a lot of things can change and a lot of things can be happening, especially in your life at this moment. And and I do feel like as though that, hey, look, I'm feeling, uh, I'm not feeling apprehensive or, or anything like that. I actually feel um, more that you need to have that strength and believe in yourself because I believe that, you're doing the right thing, are you going the right direction in, in the way that you have been thinking about all this and working on this. So I believe that, um, that Stephen, you will uh, get the help that you need from the spirits to, to guide you into doing the right things. Sometimes you might say something without realising it. Just remember, that could be the spirit coming through. I think you've already been seeing the signs, Stephen. Like I said, you listen for the signs and stuff like that. I think you've already been given the signs. I want you to start taking notice of that, okay? And that's she's shown that you have been around. I don't know if you've got little kids or anything like that, but I feel like as though she's around some other uh, kids as well. Hi, Emma. Yeah, the rods would be pretty quiet. What I would suggest you to do is to, to give them a good cleanse and then reprogram them uh, for your energies again because I actually feel like as though that the, they've had a mixed energy somewhere there and, uh, and that's why it's actually been a bit still. I think you need to, to reprogram your energy back into them and uh, so that way they'll be for you, okay, and then that way they'll work better for you. Be Get really right into it and really program them to, to do what you want them to do um, and for when you want them to do, okay? So do I. Good luck and um, congratulations. Won't be too far away. I've got to watch it. My little music only goes for so long. I've got to watch it so I can get that going again. You'd be surprised there's a lot of things going in there. Um, you know, you've got a lot of things happening, especially around you, like Tracy, um, you know, the other male that jumped in with messages, stuff like that. Well, look, they're saying look after yourself and, and do what you need to do for yourself. And I think there's a lot of things happening with a lot of people that they need to do that. And, um, you know, like Amy saying, I'm seeing a lot of activity around me. And um, I don't feel like there's anything that anyone you need to be watching out for. I think you just need to be watch where you're going. Because it doesn't matter who's out there, you still got to be able to protect yourself and to look after yourself and make sure that you go with the right people. If you don't feel someone's right for you, then they're not. Simple as that. If you don't feel comfortable with somebody and you feel hesitant towards that person, then that person's probably not there for your best interest. And this can go for everybody. 
So wherever you are and whatever you're doing out there, if you don't feel comfortable with someone that's around you, then you probably get your intuition telling you that you can't trust them or something. So think about that. Aaron, it's very interesting because I feel like as though you've got some coming and going in your place, but I feel like as though there's not really so much new. I feel like you've got others that were there before coming back. So they seem to be going around, some going out, some coming back. And um, and that's what happened to the hotels too, especially the North Kanda Hotel. I'll see, sometimes I'll see some that aren't there and some extras that are there. So they can come and go. So you'll have different ones that happen in there. Yeah, keep your chin up, mate. Seriously, I really mean that. Keep your chin up and just be, be strong and keep going the way that you are because you're a better person than what people think, all right? And that's only some anyway. But other people, a lot of people think that you're a very nice person and you've actually got a good head on your shoulders. So, look, seriously, mate, just keep hanging there and just keep doing the things that you're doing because you haven't been going in the wrong direction, all right? Erin, in regards to, to that, um, what I would suggest is that I hope you've done a, a clearing of the house. Um, when you clear, when, when people do a cleansing of the house, can you do me a little favour? Do a cleansing of the property as well because sometimes you might cleanse the house out and as soon as they only you know, you turn your back, they can come back in because the property they could be just sitting just outside the front door. So I usually recommend to people that do a cleansing of the house, do the property as well. Do the property first, then do the house. Because what happens is that if you do the property first, that gets rid of the ones that are out there. Then you do the ones in the property, they go out to, to the outside the house. But all of a sudden they realise, shit, the energy is not good here. I can't, I have to go further. So then that way it leaves them so they can't come back in so easily. Give that a try and see what happens. Because you never know, that may help. You're all welcome, guys. Just believe in yourself, Stephen. Really, seriously, believe in yourself because you've got, you've got about three or four of them in spirit around there that, that are saying that, and they're all saying believe yourself. And you know, and I think that applies to a lot of people. Um, a lot of people need to believe in themselves. And one other thing too, Stephen, is that um, when people get to a certain age. They are responsible for their own thoughts. Sometimes they see things that others can't see. So to me, that's why I said you're a good person. You'll find that others out there will actually start to see that. And if you've got older kids, they will actually see things differently now than what they have before. I said there's many changes that's happening around you. And the younger ones will rely on support in helping in their future. So there's many things that you can do. You just got to look at it all, all there, buddy. Hello. Now what's going on with this thing? There we are. Let's see. Hi, Barbara. Can you tell me if I have any spirits around me? Of course you've got spirits around you. You got that one, that one, and that one. Yeah, you've got a few of them around you. Oh, you want to know who? Oh, okay. Look, I actually feel like as though there's two females and one male that's around you, but also a little boy. And uh, and I just feel like as though they're all around there to give you a bit of encouragement to start making some changes. So I presume you've got some changes coming up in your life. So, um, yeah, start making some changes in there. I think you'll find that a lot of people do. Not just you that love that kid. You'll find that a lot of people are there for support and stuff like that. And... Um, Sometimes we can't see it. So that's why I said, Steve, he's all right. So as, you, as you've been saying, you know, like with the, the spiritual um, vibrational frequency levels that we all are in, you know, my also, also my belief is that we've got billions of people that are on this, on this world. Now, if we were all vibrating at a similar or, or, or at a certain vibrational frequency, as people say, wouldn't we all be bouncing on one another? I believe that we, we all can be on the similar vibrational frequency levels, but we all have a different intensity. Um, some might be more intensity than in others. 
and that's where the difference lies because the spirit guides and also the loved ones that are in this vibrational frequency level just above ours we can type tap into theirs every now and then and that's why some people when they're about to pass over into the spirit world some of the older people and stuff like that their children experience them that their parents saying oh yes my mum and dad's here even though that their, their parents had died years ago oh my mum and dad's here my brother's here or whatever that's because when they're starting to pass over they are actually getting that close to the spirit level of the spirit world that they are actually tapping into it in and out in and out so that's why they can see the spirits that are around them and uh, it makes it a lot better for them and it makes them feel feel a lot nicer for them so if anything like that happens out there just encourage them and say oh that's nice that's really nice or you can say who's around tonight dad or mom or whoever and um, and just encourage them because they are about to pass into that area and and i know i've known a lot of people that have actually um experienced their parents going through things like this I watched my mum's spirit disappear out of the body. When my mum died, I was the only one in the room with her. Um, the others didn't want to come in there, which is fair enough. And um, and I was in there and I watched her spirit leaving the body. Mind you, though, now, mum had been in there for a couple of weeks. Well, I don't know how many weeks, but a few weeks in the, in the hospital there. She was a bit unresponsive. However, her spirit had started leaving when she had got there. And it was just leaving very slowly. So that when the time came that we had to turn the machines off and everything else, mum's spirit was still going, just nice and gently going and going and going. And, and I'm stand, I'm sitting there alongside mum holding her hand in her. And, um, and I just said to the nurses, I said, no, she's gone. Because I just watched that last little and left. And when I said that to the nurse, the nurse turned around and goes, yes, how did you know? That was because I just saw that spirit just disappearing. And when my dad died, I was up in Mildura there and I was sitting out in the in the reception area and I actually watched mum and dad walk around the corner hand in hand together to go out together. So that was nice. So, you know, there's different things that people can actually experience. And, um, and I want you to be able to try and look out for them things and look out for the different experiences and the different things that they, uh, they try to show you. Uh, the different signs, whether it's, uh, like I said before, whether it's music, whether it's uh, an object or, or, or anything. Sometimes people can see others and some people can't. That all depends on their intensity in regards to uh, their vibrational frequency levels that can put them closer to where the spirits are. That's why they can see them. And look, we only use 10% of our brain, so they say, and what I've heard. How do we know that some people can't use that little bit extra? might lose something else somewhere else, but we might have that extra elsewhere to be able to pick up on uh, the spirits and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I might be a bit maybe down thick in some places, but I've got this little gift here that I can communicate with the spirits. So, um, so you know, it just, everything's different and every individual out there, and that's you, every one of you that's out there is different. You're not the same. You never will be the same. You are all different individuals. You need to look at that. You need to look at yourselves as, hey, I'm an individual. I need to do things my way. I need to do things how I feel and not take on other people's crap or, or if they tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Don't listen to it. Just listen to what you feel. Sometimes people will say things to you and you think, do you know that's actually a pretty good advice? So therefore, I'll keep that. So you only take what you need. And you'll find in, in everything that we do in our lives over the years, we will collectively collect different experiences that we've had along those lines so that when our spirit passes over into the spirit world, we can take a lot of those experiences back with us. So a lot of people out there, look at where you've been in the past who you've been with, what type of work you've done, everything else like that. Look at it and look at what you've learned from it. You don't have to say about, oh, it was a terrible relationship. I don't want, you don't want that. Don't think about that. You look at, now, what did I learn from that? And collectively keep that because what that does is that helps you to be able to 
look at the future and think, well, you know, shit, I'm not going to do that again. Or I already know that now, so that's not going to happen again. Or if I, if I do, that'll happen this way. So that's why I say to people we need to look at what we can do, not what we can't do. And that in regards to work or, or relationships or anything. With your work, if you're not happy with your work, then look at why you're not happy with that work. Do you actually uh, feel that's the right one for you? If not, then do something about it. Look at areas of what you have done in the past and perhaps you might find a hint of in between these little things that you used to do as to where it can help you in the future in doing things that you may like. So there's a lot of things out there that we can do in our everyday life and that's well, you know, that, that's well into our future. So once this virus has, has finished and everything else has completely gone, I'm hoping there's a hell of a lot of people out there. I'm hope, really hoping there's a shitload of people out there that are going to be sort of, holy hell, let's get on with it, bam, and just start doing things. It's just going to be very, very difficult for, for some people. It'll be easy for others. Some people that have got work now might find it difficult when others will be working as well. When everything comes back into it, some might lose their jobs and the others will take over. You just can't guarantee anything in this world anymore. So we have to do what we can do to be able to go forward in our lives the best that we can. And like I said before, no one else can do it for us. We are the only ones that can do things. So you have to do things the best way that you can. Okay, let's see. Okay, this one here. Why is it that just before my father-in-law passed, he went back to a bad place? We found out later where he was remembering. It was in Chang Pao. Okay, in regards to that, it was, that was something that was very, very remembered to him. It affected him in a, a, a different way of psychological and spiritually. So in reality, he might have looked at it as a bad thing, but he must have learnt a hell of a lot out of that. And, you know, to go through that and to be able to get through that, that was very, very difficult. Sometimes they do that for a different reason. And, I mean, look, everybody, no matter who, everyone's different. So you will get people out there that will say, ah, the spirit world's just nothing there, it's just black. Well, I had a near-death experience, it was just all black. When you get other people that are saying, oh, when I, when I had a near-death experience, it was wonderful, there's white light and everything else. It can be the interpretation of the physical mind that puts it there to think that, okay, that last few seconds, you're sort of thinking, no, nope, there's nothing there. I'm not going to take any notice of that. And then afterwards, they get into that spirit world and it's like, oh, crap, it is, I was wrong. It is different. And I've had that happen to me several times. I have had spirit come back to me and have said, hey, Daryl, I'm really sorry, mate. You are right. It is bloody like this over here, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I have, I've had that with several people that have passed over that came back to me in spirit and told me that. So I believe, that's my belief again, is that it's actually all nice and, and it's good over there. But the people create that uh, that last little bit like uh, your, your father-in-law, Wendy, is, is in a way that it was the last physical aspect of something that was traumatic for him. And he might have been in a situation then where he had either passed and come back uh, or had a near-death experience or he might have gone through uh, a, play, a, a bad time there where he was trying to ask God for help and all this and wasn't getting it. So there's many different things and reasons why that, that could happen, but I'm pretty sure that, um, that your father-in-law is over in the spirit world and it's different now. He actually sees things differently. All right? G'day, Vishal. How are you, mate? I hope everything's all going well because I feel it should be. What do you mean who jumped in? Ah, the one that jumped in there. Oh, okay. It's all right, Tracy. I'll try and work out what the hell you're on about in regards to who jumped in. Look, people, uh, spirits jump in and out like a bloody yo yo. It annoys the crap out of me. But they do. They come in and go out again. They can be just there for support. They could also be able to 
Um, I actually feel like as though it was a male that had um, dark hair, short dark hair, and maybe a part on one side, but a slight wave just above on on the larger part. It was a, a bit of a wave just after the part. Anyway, um, and it had a little bit shiny. I feel like it's probably about um, five nine, five ten, and um, yeah, fairly prominent. So he was actually fairly, he was very strong minded and, and actually a really strong person. So um, that's a bit of an idea on who it could have been. You work out that. I never mention people's names. I don't know their names, and I don't go by any names. TV show. I thought I just said something then before to give you there. But yeah, I already mentioned that. But yeah, I feel like as though things are going to go well for you for sure. And it should be. It should be right here. Okay, Matthew, I wish to hell someone could tell me something, buddy. I think that you look what I was getting, Matthew, is from an older lady. Um very grey-haired lady. Anyway, um, I'm feeling like as though she's saying that you need to look closely at what you're doing. I feel like as though you need to look very closely at where you're going. So um, I hope the hell you can make sense of that, mate. So, so there you go. So in regards to a lot of the spirits that are around us and, and what they're doing, they will help us in any way they can. They will give us signs and try to get through to us with signs and stuff like that. And just by out of curiosity, if anybody is interested, that picture that's up there, that was drawn uh, to me uh, by Mary Clement, and that was uh, Melchizedek. And she said Melchizedek, Lord Melchizedek, was one of my um, um, spirit guides or one of the, the spirits that were around guiding me and helping me. So um, that was very nice for her, and that's why I have that hanging up in there because I think it's a, it's a beautiful picture and it's really, really nice. So, so there you go, guys. All right then, guys, I'm going to rack off, make it an early night, and I'm going to make like those little furry things and go for it. If you don't get that, it's just a little tiny thing. It's called a gopher, and, you know, when I go for it, anyway, okay, it's only my humour. All right, guys, look, every one of you out there, please take care and look after each other and do what you can in uh, to, to get yourselves where you want to be, and that's probably the big thing. So keep well, keep safe, and, um, and I look forward to hearing to you next Monday. All right, guys. Thanks very much for being a part of the show. And as I always say, you are the show. You're the ones that make this show. I'm just here to look stupid. I mean, uh, um, just to keep you company. But um, all right, guys, you take care. Look after yourselves. Bye. Thanks for being here.